next wave of pandemic to hit like tsunami, says Danish scientist. With existing pandemic curbing methods found to be ineffective, a wave of the new coronavirus variant first discovered in the United Kingdom threatens to strike like a tsunami, says a Danish scientist. Denmark's State Serum Institute is a government agency that tracks diseases and advises on public health policy. The institute's director, Tyra Grove Kraus, began sequencing every positive coronavirus test last week to check for mutations. Kraus said, This period is going to be a bit like a tsunami, in the way you stand on the beach and then suddenly you can see all the water retracts. Afterward, you will have the tsunami coming in and overwhelming you. Despite a strict lockdown, cases of the virus variant have been increasing in Denmark at a rate of 70% per week. Danish public health officials said if they weren't extensively monitoring the spread of the virus, they would now have a false sense of confidence because the number of new cases from the original coronavirus confirmed daily in Denmark has decreased. However, Cases of the British variant have skyrocketed over the past month, and Danish authorities expect it to become the main strain of the virus in the country by mid-February. In a long post this month, Denmark's Prime Minister Mette Frederiksen told people to imagine sitting on the top row of Copenhagen's Parken Stadium, a soccer stadium that can hold 38,000 people, which is being filled by a water faucet one drop the first minute and increasing with the exponent of two per minute. At that rate, Frederiksen said, it takes 44 minutes to fill up the stadium, but for the first 42 minutes, it will seem almost empty. She stated, the point is that one only discovers that the water has risen when it is almost too late. As people work from home, Copenhagen's previously bustling bike lanes have become quiet. Many stores have also closed. Preschool, regarded as one of the essential sectors, remains open. The chief medical officer at Odense University Hospital, the largest hospital in southern Denmark, said, It's this strange silence before the war begins. Lockdowns can cause more deaths, experts say. According to a report by Sound of Hope Media Group, as COVID-19, also known as the CCP virus, ravages the world, many countries have adopted lockdown measures to curb the spread. However, medical and economic experts from many countries have warned that if the lockdowns are not lifted the loss of lives could far exceed that caused by the virus itself according to a january 22nd report by financial media zero hedge a real-time assessment of community transmission react study shows that the infection rate in the United Kingdom has increased rather than decreased from January 6th to 15th after the UK declared a national lockdown on January 4th. Stephen Riley, professor of infectious disease dynamics at Imperial College London said, it's long enough that were the lockdown working effectively, we would certainly have hoped to see a decline. He also noted that current research certainly doesn't support the conclusion that lockdown is working. A leaked internal study by the German Federal Ministry of the Interior, Building and Community found that the impact of lockdowns in Germany may eventually cause more deaths than the CCP virus itself, as patients with other serious diseases suffer untreated. A South African Data Analysis Association went on to assert that the country's economy under lockdowns could cause 29 times more deaths than the virus itself. U.S. scholars from Duke University, Harvard University, and Johns Hopkins University even warned that the lockdowns could result in more than 1 million additional deaths over the next 20 years. From intellectual property theft to espionage, the CCP's infiltration through Western universities. Universities in the West are vital since they produce cutting-edge research and foster society's prosperity and innovation. This is why the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, has successfully taken advantage of it from all aspects. According to a Toronto Star report, between 2006 and 2017, 
Top universities in Canada, such as Waterloo, Toronto, and McGill universities, are also among the top 10 universities outside China for collaborating with the People's Liberation Army, the PLA. Just as the PLA Daily said, the National University of Defense and Technology and similar institutions in China have been picking flowers in foreign lands to make honey in China via such international collaborations. According to Australia's Strategic Policy Institute's report, the PLA has about 500 collaborations in both the US and UK, 300 in both Canada and Australia, about 100 in Germany and in Singapore as well. Moreover, the funds used in these collaborations are often unknown to the country's taxpayers. The CCP also steals intellectual property from universities in the West by using visiting Chinese scholars or recruiting Western professors through its recruitment programs like the Thousand Talent Plan. For example, Xin Wang, a researcher at the UC San Francisco, was prosecuted for obtaining intellectual property while hiding his connection with the PLA. The chair of the Department of Chemistry and Chemical Biology at Harvard University, Dr. Charles Lieber, and a researcher from Kansas State were also charged for giving intellectual property to the CCP in return for money. On December the 9th, 2020, Secretary of State Michael Pompeo delivered remarks on the China challenge to U.S. national security and academic freedom at Georgia Institute of Technology, saying that the Chinese Communist Party knows it can never match our innovation. That's why it sends 400,000 students a year to the United States of America to study. It is no accident. Look, the Chinese Communist Party knows it can never match our innovation. It has state-owned enterprise. It's an authoritarian regime. It is a government-centric focus. That's why it sends 400,000 students a year to the United States of America to study. 400,000 students a year studying in our universities come from one country. It is no accident. According to Pompeo, the Chinese Students and Scholars Associations, CSSA, directed and funded by the Chinese Embassy or local Chinese consulates, are used as tools to keep tabs on students and press pro-Beijing causes. The recent story of the Chinese spy and former president of the CSSA at California State University East Bay, Christine Fung, who was assigned with the task to obtain classified information through having an affair with U.S. Congressman Eric Swalwell, also epitomizes the CCP infiltration in the West. According to the FBI, the CCP has employed the same tactic to target other Western politicians to infiltrate the Western political sphere as well. Pompeo said, We've had the balance fundamentally wrong because there was this notion that there was no cost connected to permitting the risk that the Chinese Communist Party identified, the opportunity that they saw, and the efforts they have undertaken. We want these students here, but there has to be a process. There has to be a rigorous evaluation. We need institutions, too, that are transparent, that are clear, that are following the requirements, both uh, Department of U.S. Department of Education requirements, uh, th the requirements to make sure that uh, U.S. property rights are protected in the way that you just described. In his most recent tweets, just several days before he left his office, Secretary Pompeo said, The CCP is poisoning the well of our higher education. If we don't educate ourselves, we'll get schooled by Beijing.